got the back of the lathe on the carpet again. There we go. Dave on the Crafted Channel with another back of the truck special. There it is, baby. We got us a uh, early 30s, I believe, Craftsman lathe. This thing's in beautiful condition. Someone has kept it in good shape, cleaned it. It's got a uh, somewhat fresh paint job on it, I suppose. The one big screw up. We're putting this lathe in the truck, and this handle is pushing on that fuel tank, and that son of a gun snapped right off. I can't believe I broke a handle. That's such a problem when you get a lathe. You got to track down handles for all the idiots that have broken in here. I broke one, so dang. Got to be more careful next time. That's a uh, early Craftsman uh, workbench there, so semi-appropriate thing to put the uh, lathe on. Um, Got this lathe with a whole bunch of goodies, and let me show you what where most of those are. So here we go. We got uh, some clawsing uh, paperwork here, parts and various things. This is a Babbitt bearing lathe. So. Some more paperwork and information. Um, I'm going to build up. Uh, not sure if this was just in the back of my truck or not. Got a bunch of weird tooling. Um, got some uh, some gears. I don't know what these came out of. Maybe I'll figure it out. Maybe one of you guys know. Uh, got some huge tool holders. I'll never use. Maybe I'll use that uh, bit out of there. I don't know. This will go in my stack of tool holders I have to sell. There's another interesting tool holder. Some kind of radius cutter on it. Got a uh, Williams number OOB boring bar holder. I am going to keep an assortment of this stuff in case I set up a lathe with a uh, with a lantern, you know, in case I hate myself really bad someday. So here looks like a bunch of enlarged copies of uh, charts and things, threading charts. Um, here's an Atlas three jaw chuck. Looks like it's in fairly decent shape. Number of chuck wrenches. An interesting device here. This is uh, got some dies in it for threading and I'd love to have a set of these. I don't know why. Just because I want to collect everything. It's hollow. This is broke off uh, but this is for through threading so you could uh, thread a very very long rod with something like this somehow. So that's an interesting tool. Probably worthless to me. Got a couple of fly cutters in here. I mean, this is just full of different cutting tools. And, like, I didn't have a lot of 3 8 stuff if I wanted to uh, make some custom bits. I hope there's some half inch stuff in here, too, and even bigger. Uh, there's 7 16 So, I'm going to be collecting a lot of tool bits. I haven't dug around in here. I notice there's a number of grooving tools. There's a lot of uh, threading bits. There's a 60 degree. Just a whole bunch of stuff in here. Yeah, that's kind of rough, but that's some kind of fly cutter. Who knows what might come in handy. What we got here? There's a big fly cutter. I mean, a lot of this stuff uh, is probably better choices for. I don't know what this is. 
tapers down. It's probably a boring bar, if I had to guess. Looks like it's got a uh, tool bit out here. Be careful, I'll cut myself in here. Brazed on bit. Oh my god, I need to throw that right in the trash can. But yeah, a lot of a lot of doodads. When I get more tool stories, I'll have to sort all this stuff out. Well, that might be kind of a handy. I don't have any boring bars really that hold this kind of stuff, so here you go. Here's one. And for example, I could take a 60 degree, that's not 60 degree, but I could take a 60 degree threading bit and do some internal threading with something like this. Just a lot of stuff. Let's look at the kick ass things. This is a steady rest, of which I do not have for my Atlas Craftsman lathes. And I still don't have one. But this fits a 9-inch, uh, a uh, my 9-inch uh, South Bend. So this is, uh, this is really a pretty cool find. So I've got a uh, steady rest for my South Bend now. This is a follower rest for my Atlas. These things are expensive. Um, that was one of the main reasons why I bought this lathe, because of this hard-to-find tool. If I'm not mistaken, these sell for about 200 bucks. I think these sell for about 150 so when you consider the 700 I paid for the lathe, that's quite a discount on the lathe. Got another faceplate. I got a 6-inch four-jaw chuck, which I'd have to check, but I think I only have an 8-inch four-jaw chuck. So pretty cool getting a 6-inch. Um, this will probably be the one I use the most, assuming it's all in good shape. Here's all the change gears. And um, these, I believe this is a complete set. Another uh, Williams tool holder. Got a ton of those. I got a milling attachment. Now this milling attachment, it looks like somebody's made an expanded, an expanded jaw for this. This is a shop-made jaw. So that's... Uh, that's pretty interesting. I probably won't be able to get top price for this. I've already got a good milling one, a milling attachment, so I'll probably end up selling this. But uh, but the, these are worth from two to two fifty. I probably will only get about hundred and fifty for this since it's got this shop made vise on it. Even though it's it looks really nice um, and it's definitely bigger than mine. I would say by half an inch, three quarters of an inch. Um, they use the compound slide for these um, that's the same as the slide that's on a 10 inch lathe and notice this one is cast this is a, a Zamax slide so this is a really early part here or the person may have taken this off of my lathe because I thought uh, the lathes of this vintage that I just bought that they all had this uh, a Zmax compound which was a problem so probably whoever bought this um, this uh, milling attachment, they probably switched these parts to put the better part on the lathe and the worst part here. So that's uh, that's really pretty cool part, pretty interesting. So I'll be selling that since I already have one. Now here's I've been buying lathes so that I can accumulate the expensive, hard to find parts. And I've found most of the things that I want. I still don't have a taper attachment. I still don't have a steady rest for an atlas. Um, I still don't have one of the original uh, carriage stops. And I'd really like to find a couple of those. Um, so the, the more of these lathes that I buy, the more stuff I have to sell off that I have in duplicate. Like that, for example. So... It, there's a point, there's a diminishing return on buying lathes to get tooling, but for now I'm going to keep up doing it. Now this would be the third 10-inch Atlas that I have, and this thing is really nice. Wait till I get it out and show it to you. Um, it's tempting to keep it, but, you know, I've already got a lathe under restoration. I've got the old gray lady. She's in good shape. 
she's over there on the other side of that glove. Mm, I don't know, can you see it? You can see the pulley right there. That's where the old gray lady is. Um, and I've got this 12-inch Craftsman right here, which uh, is a project. I've got all the parts I need to put it together and make it whole. Um, so, yeah, you know, I can't keep them all. Um, i got to get rid of them. Um, a lot of this stuff over here is things that I got with the South Bend lathe, um, which I should have showed in an earlier video. So I kept a lot of metal for turning. I sent some of that to uh, Bison Workshop. It's time to get that pig out of there. My goal is to get that lathe mounted back on that workbench, get this thing operational, and get it on Craigslist and get it sold. It's a beautiful lathe, but I need the money. I need to get the money back because I borrowed it from uh, some place I probably shouldn't have borrowed it from. And uh, we need to get that money back in place and get this down the road into somebody else's uh, workshop. don't want to lift this workbench all at once so I move this trash can over here and I think I'll back this up a little bit I was hoping I'd have room to swing this around Notice how I did that, so I didn't have to lift the thing out all at once. All I ever had to do was pick up one end of it at a time. So we got a drawer full of goodies down here. Oh, not too many goodies. We've got us a big boring bar. Another big boring bar. Actually almost looks like a internal grooving bar. Some kind of shop made boring bar. Another boring bar. I don't know, this stuff's probably probably not worth keeping. Too big, I've got uh, other quick change stuff I can use. And there's nothing with this lathe big enough to hold this stuff either. So the other things in this drawer, belt I took off the lathe. Um, oh, another tool bit. Wow. Awesome. Oh, check it out. You know, since I bought some of these, I've I've slowly been uh, finding them that I already own them or that I'm getting them in new deals. That's a Morse brand. So when I get a full set of these in. A good American brand, I'll get rid of my Chinese crap. Switch from the lathe. Nuts and bolts, things I took off the lathe. Well, let's see, I need to get this workbench in a position where I can leave it um, and we'll slide the lathe onto it. So I'm going to leave this uh, table right here. Hopefully it won't take me too long to sell this lathe because this is kind of covering up my uh, stand-up drill press and my bandsaw. Now when you're working by yourself you gotta you gotta work smart. You know I, I don't want to grab a hold of that and you know, it has no value to me to show off to show you that I can just you know pick that up by myself and you know wh why I just hurt myself so um, gotta work smart so since I buy lathes occasionally, I keep these sheets of plywood here. Slides a lot better on this than it does on this carpet in the truck. And since I'm coming up to this table, it ought to be fairly easy to get her mounted up here. Now I had somebody help me load this that had some ass. Oh, check it out! The first one I've ever bought that had the oil dipper. I'm not selling that with the lathe. Okay. 
Here's that rascally handle. Man, I can't believe I did that. I think I can lean this over and slip this piece of plywood under it. It's got the back of the lathe on the carpet again. There we go. Usually when I have to move these things myself, I end up taking the lathe completely apart to move it. It takes you forever to get around to putting it back together. Too much strain. That's how you unload a, something that weighs a couple hundred pounds. Maybe, I don't know what these weigh, two, three hundred pounds? That's how you unload them. It's helpful to have a workbench. So let's look at this closely. Look at these ways, man. A few little tool marks and stuff where things have been dropped on them. Remember, this is likely from the 30s. This thing is like brand spanking new. The guy that owned this built uh, um, builds real steam engines that pull like kids and parents around in a, a uh, museum where there's a Wright Flyer here in Dayton. So deer teeth are in good shape. Things just in in fantastic shape and it's nice and clean. Somebody will be uh, very lucky to find this lathe and very happy to get it when I put it up for sale. Oh ho ho, look at this. Grease. Why do people put grease in these? Oh wait a minute, is that grease? Oh no, 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 that's the felt wick. Awesome. Yeah, so this is probably in the best starting condition of any, any lathe I've ever bought. Now there's other things that I'm going to get from this lathe. The old gray lady is missing the correct handle uh, for the tailstock. So I'm going to switch them and put the shop made handle on this lathe. There's a lot of things. I'm going to have one of these which I never had before. Um, so there's a lot of value that I'm going to get from this. Um, Let's get this chuck off of here. Oh wow, the chuck doesn't pop off. Feels like a decent enough chuck. Half inch chuck. I'm wondering if I can JB weld this back on. Look at that. I think it would be interesting to JB weld this and then drill it and press in a, a dowel pin. Because this handle's definitely in good enough shape to try to save. That'll break the chrome here. This one here, if you ever get a, a lathe with this handle broken, these babies go for about 60 bucks. So you want to be very careful with it. You know, the thought crossed my mind when I was. Uh, carrying, uh, I got this lathe home over two days. The first day I took the, the drawer and all the miscellaneous tools that came with it. And the thought crossed my mind before I moved it of just removing all of these handles. And I think in the future when I move a lathe, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all the handles off of it. There's no sense in risking them. These are made out as a Mac. They're easy to break. No point in, uh, in risking them. So this is the piece here that's the same on the... Uh, on the milling attachment and I'm wondering if this wasn't switched. These right here, this is a this is a metal one and I kind of expected this lathe would have a Zemac 
uh, cross slide too and it's not so it either came with the metal parts or somebody updated it um, but this this is a beautiful lathe there's one of those reverse gearboxes bison made I've seen these this kind of chuck before this is a funky chuck I have a uh, Unimat lathe it's got a chuck like this on it I've never seen one of these on an atlas lathe I don't know if there's a reason for me to keep this it's a craftsman chuck E393 so I guess to I guess to tighten this chuck you have to lock the back gears and put a rod in here I think they call it a buddy bar or something like that I don't know I have to think about it I like to keep the unique tools threads inside are good spindle looks good got a nice threading die these screws in good shape man this baby's nice. Well, I might regret selling this someday. I don't know. How many lathes can a man own? This will be my third 10 inch. I don't think I can justify keeping three of them. Well, my goal tonight was to get it out of the truck safely. And uh, I think I've achieved that.